All right, I guess we're starting. My name is Spat. For those who don't know, I'm sure you all know me. This is on my live Facebook page anyway. We're going to build the Bandai ATST, the Chicken Walker, as it was once called. The little heffy at at critter. This is from Bandai. It is 148 scale. The odd scales for Bandai. Get that over here somewhere. All right. The instructions, pretty much in Japanese. Actually, these are the good ones. These are the Americanized ones, so there is some English on it. Finally. Building some of the other Bandai kits can be complicated, but everything is in Japanese when you get the imported ones. Let's prep the first page. John Doherty, what's up, John? I'll be in New York July 1st and 2nd weekend, but out in Long Island, unfortunately, so don't know if I'll be able to stop by. I know, I know, I suck. We got Mike and Dave, we got a few people. All right, let's see. The one thing I love about these Bandai kits is the detail. Everything about these kits is just amazing. I don't know if you guys can see these sprues, I got every little thing possible. Here's your little dude, little pilot guy. I think there's a Chewbacca. Yep, there you go. There's a Chewbacca. I don't know if I'm going to use the Chewbacca. I haven't decided how I'm going to pose this one yet. I kind of was just going to do a normal one with the two guys in it. But that Chewbacca figure is kind of cool. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do him sticking out of the roof instead. All right. Next sprue. Put up everything. Okay, more bits. Another dude. Garbage bags for Belle to play with. She likes to wear them on her head. Empty plastic bags. It's fun. That's what she enjoys. What's up? All right, let's see. And the other nice thing about the Bandai kits, you get two sets of decals. One are the water slide style. And the other are actual sticker stickers for, you know, I guess if you're a little kid like me and you don't know how to use water slide decals, you can use those. Put those on the side. And check these parts here. C2, C1. They, and then the nice thing about the Bandai kits, they actually label all the sprues with a number or letter and number designation so you can easily find which part you're looking for instead of sitting there for three days digging through a pile of sprues trying to find one little piece based on the number. All right, so the instructions start off with number one, building the little neck, the little bridge piece that supports the legs. I don't know, I guess the hips. So we're gonna build the hips first with C230, all right. C230, and the sprue cutter, I got a brand new sprue cutter because the last one I had just was not cutting it, literally. Pun intended. Grace is angry at me. I'm going to assume that's because of the, the Bell plastic bag comment. <laughs> I'm sure she'll come in here later to complain to me in person. So, hey, how come you're using my name? I didn't sign off on this. All right. My goal was to kind of try and do this like as a one night build, start to finish. Unfortunately, in case if you're not following me on Facebook, the uh, C229. The air conditioning in my place is out. I guess the compressor blew out last week, so it is hot as balls in here. I've got my little fan over here. I don't know if you can see it. Little old circular Vornado. Uh, every so often it kicks in. It gets really loud and noisy, and I gotta hit it till it shuts up. But so just keep that in mind that it might get annoying. Uh, A7, A6. I should get like a little. Like thing to like a clothesline to hang the sprues on so I can find them a little bit more easily. B, I'm gonna guess your A. Okay, A. These instructions are so wacky. But everything, the, the beautiful thing about the band eye kits, you really don't need glue. Uh, all the pieces fit together kind of like a snap tight kit, but better. Six and seven. All right, just in case, because I don't know which one goes where. I'm going to take them off with the sprue that has the numbers on them, so when I get to them, I'll be able to figure out which one goes where. Now we get to play with the X-Acto knife. Yay! 
clean up the little edges. And this is uh, a little bit different. This is the uh, Return of the Jedi ATST. There was a little chicken walker in Empire, I guess. Was it even in the original Empire? You guys might know. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, these go together so easily. It's so much fun to build. Um, the original... See if you guys even know this trivia. The original Chicken Walker or ATST from Empire, was it in the theatrical version or did they only add it in the special edition? I can't remember if that was something they threw in. Yes, it was. Yes, it was what? Theatrical or special edition? Yeah, everybody's writing yes, it was, but I don't know what that means. All right, so six goes on this side. Mike doesn't remember. Was it theatrical or was it... Yeah, I remember it was Empire, but was it in the theatrical version of Empire or only the special edition of Empire? That's the question. Because for some reason, I remember them making... It was in both. I remember making a big deal about it, like that it was like this cool thing. Like, ooh, look, we, and we added this chicken walker. Like, what does peak... Oh, uh, keep calm. I guess my shirt is in reverse because I've reversed the camera so that I could see what you guys were writing. It says, keep calm and be amazing. Oh, are you guys just making fun of me? You guys just ribbing me. Let's see how this guy goes together. He doesn't want to go in there. Okay, let's try it the other way. That's the nice thing about... Okay, I guess you go over here then. Yep, there you go. The Bandai kits, you know, if you're pressing a piece in and it's not going in, probably doesn't go there. They're, they're very good at being super specific. I know you're the right number. Rotate, there you go. That, you know, you really, it's very hard to put the wrong part, even if they're almost identical, into the wrong thing. Everything has got, like, differently sized holes. And you look at this little piece, it's got these two little pegs, but they're different sizes to make sure that you can only fit them into the correct hole and not accidentally, like I keep trying, putting them in the wrong ones. Like I'm doing. Nice. <laughs> okay, and then we close this guy up. And there's a little neck piece. Ooh, there's motion at my front door. Uh, hold on, guys. Sorry about that. I'm guessing that was a bug. It, it, the uh, I've got the ring doorbell on the front of the house, and sometimes, like if like a lightning bug or a moth flies by, the thing goes, ah, we're under attack. All right, C2, C1. That's A and B. That's D. C1, 11. C1, 11. And for those who don't build kits, yes, these sprue cutters are a lifesaver. I, in the old days, I used to use an X-Acto knife. I used to slice my fingers up good when I was a kid. Good God. If my mom ever knew, like, how much blood was spilled in my bedroom while building these kits, you know, I don't think she would ever let me have them again. C15, C14. I mean, it, it was like a scene out of a horror movie in there. Okay, C. C2, 25. And don't get me wrong, I still slice my fingers open a lot with X-Acto knives, just not as much as I did when I was a kid. And C233. I like to cut all the parts for the upcoming instruction segment ahead of time. Clean them up. And then piece them together. And try really hard not to accidentally drop them on the floor. Which I'm sure I'll do a couple of times. Yeah, Bandai kits, 
because they come pre-painted, like I'll, I'll probably assemble these in, you know, subsections. I'll build the legs separately, the upper body separately, and then uh, this little neck or whatever you want to call it separate and then paint them all just give it a really quick coat of like a gray very similar to this using this as the base and that's it you know you really don't have to go too crazy just like to clean up any little bits of spoke that's on there yeah, it looks good. All right. And we got a bunch of people watching. Ooh, oh, did Belle show up? Sometimes she walks in and watches me. If you watch the background, like by the door, every so often she comes in to see what I'm doing, and she gives me this weird look like, oh, my God, he's doing that thing again. All right. So many cool parts. Okay, and then this thing on the front. This part down. Ooh, so nice. Oh, I'm getting. Oh, I got a Deadpool. Where's the Deadpool one coming from? Is that a new thing? Hey, Peter. Is there like a special Deadpool thing that's going on now that I don't know about because I'm not hip? And for those of you who are Deadpool fans, did you want the contact info of the Widow with the comics? Uh, yeah, okay. Um, we have, uh, what is it called now? Eternal Con coming up, and we've got Brianna Hildebrand, who plays Negasonic Teenage Warhead. She'll be at the convention. So if you're a Deadpool fan, you should be heading out there to go meet her. All right. Ooh, so nice. Ooh. Just the merch. Yeah, but is that a new logo? Like, is that a promotion that, that Facebook is doing that you can make that thing pop out? All right, D1, D2. I've never seen it do a Deadpool thing before. What the hell is this thing? Turn the part. I like these instructions with the Japanese where it doesn't quite. Okay, that's weird looking. Okay. This is D28. I'll put that on the right side. By D18. Which is this one? No, D19. D19. Wait a minute. D1. That's D18. Yeah, I jumped ahead and that's 8. And then D19. Okay, so this is D18. Okay, this is a very small part that I'm sure I'm about to lose. It's about to go flying somewhere. Okay, I didn't lose it. Okay, I'm going to put this little piece in place first only because I am going to lose it. It's so tiny. This, this little tiny hole right there, this is the piece that plugs it. I don't know why it needed to be separate. Yeah, I didn't lose it. There you go. That's, oops. The little tiny plug. Okay. And then I lost the other part. Here we go. Okay. And then we reverse it and do it again for the other side. Did I already pull that part off now? <laughs> D29, D28, here we go. Yeah, after doing all those X-Wings and TIE Fighters and Y-Wings of from the Bandai collection, I was like, oh, I'm so burned out on Star Wars model kits. But then I was at MomoCon and I saw this and I was like, all right, one more Star Wars model kit. Oh, it goes all the way in. There we go. Okay. And one more. Mm -hmm. And there. And these look like little 
you know, spark plug, whatever, the little headers on an engine or something. I don't know what they were in the original. There you go, that piece is in there. Ooh. And that is part one dash one complete. Yay! Now for one dash two. All right, C1, we can all parts from all over the place. All right, so these are the Ds, C, C1, C136. Mm -hmm. this doesn't, there we go, 36. I was like going to say, it doesn't really go that high on this number. C-136, C-114, B-22, bingo! <laughs> I had to do that joke at some point. Figured might as well get it out of the way now. B-22. Okay. A-30. Really pulling pieces from all over the place on this one. A-30 is a weird little hose. Ooh, this one's very flexible. The uh, This section, what I love about Bandai also, one of the other great things about it, is the way they'll do one piece of sprue in multiple colors. So you've got the brown, got a transparent red for the little laser beams, you've got the regular gray plastic, and this is new because this section over here on the top, these are flexible rubber pieces in gray that actually have a lot more give than the other one. So that's very, very different. Okay, so let's see if we can build this one. Uh, let's do a little cleanup just in case, because this is kind of on the face. Okay. Okay. All right. And now, let's see what we got here. C1, attach according to preferences. I don't know what that means. Is there like a an optional way that this can go? I've never seen that before. Attach according to preferences. Does it slide? Looks like it should go there, right? Okay, that's kind of weird. Uh, it is complex. I can't, I haven't finished it yet. Thanks, Brian. All right, give me three more minutes. I'll finish it. And then this is going on here. Covering the vents. Okay. And then on the bottom, it looks like this is this little skid plate. That's... Okay. This feels very loose in here for some reason. Let's see. Let's put in this one first. The hose, which continues to here. All right. Very interesting. Nice little, little rubber hose that goes around. I wonder if I should paint these black. I don't know. There's a picture. Do these things look like they're anything? No. Nah. They look all the same color. That's the nice thing about these movies. Some of the, the guys making these things were a little lazy and kind of just everything got painted gray. Okay. And this guy goes in here. This one just feels like it moves a little too much. I might glue this in just to keep it from popping off later. So there's a reason I don't see anything in here that says, you know, must be, let's see. Yeah, they're just kind of there, little skid plates. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm going to glue it. Glue, glue, glue. Ugh, I'm not badly reading the instructions. The instructions are badly written in Japanese. You can read Japanese better than me. There we go. 
All right, now the other side. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Uh, A26, another hose. Zoom goes kind of the opposite way. And then attaches to the front. Okay, that's interesting. Another little hose piece. Is that light? There we go. I have a problem with lighting in my videos. I have either too much or too little. Bum -bum -bum. All right, and then C112. C. That's B. C112. Yeah, the really nice thing about these Bandai kits is the fact that they don't require glue. It really just saves so much time on building them. You're just kind of popping them together. Remember to cap your glue. I always forget to buy new ones. And this is what I do on a Friday night. It was either this or play Prey all night. I think I lost about like seven hours yesterday on the game. And if you haven't played it, it's pretty amazing. This just kind of pops in over this hole. Okay. Okay. Good, good, good. Next, A29, another hose. Very hosey on this part of the ship, or the tank, or whatever you want to call it. That is the ultimate goal. I want to do. I found a place that has a resin kit of it. It's the uh, the tank from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. That uh, whatever the Mark Seventeen female, whatever that thing was that they did. But obviously they this goes to the so they uh, modified it for the movie, and it's definitely different than the actual. Um, or they built it custom for the movie, I should say. Okay, and then this runs up and attaches here. Oh, very cool looking. Yeah, these hoses definitely give it a very cool look, if you guys can see. This this is the ATST. Sorry, for those who are joining late, we're building the Bandai ATST. Um, but I'm talking about the tank from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. One of these days I will find a cheap kit of it. I found one that's not cheap. Uh, C1, C113, the other plate. I'll probably glue this one on as well. I have a feeling they're meant to be like movable, and I do not feel like moving it. And we still have time. We should do a poll. Who says we should do it? Build this guy with the two crewmen, and who says we should build it with Chewbacca sticking out of the top, a la the end of the film when they. Let me see this one here. When Chewbacca is like, hey, look, I captured it. Yay! When. The heroes of the film break every rule of the Geneva Convention in capturing an enemy vehicle and using it against the enemy without changing the markings. Ooh. That's right. I went there. Yeah, see, that side holds in a little bit better. Still a little loose. I'm going to use the glue. Just because I can. My whole desktop is covered in little bits of green fuzz from the Groot's see it wisping away as I breathe on the table. Whee! Hose. Very cool. Oh, there's a little, little plates. Roger Sherman. Oh, good. If this is turning you on so much that you want to touch yourself, Roger, then all the things we thought about you in college were true. All right. Next, A27. More hoses. A27. There's a little tiny hose. Speaking of little tiny hoses and Roger, oh, there we go. That one just fell into place. Okay. A27. Where do you go? 
Let's see, you're going this. Okay, just that one just kind of hangs out. And then A28. I do love that they have little rubber hoses on these things. I will do a nice little wash on them to give them a little bit more life when the time comes. And then this one attaches in here. And it looks like the second hose, you can see there's two hoses coming out of this little thing and one of them just kind of hangs out, doesn't really go anywhere. That's what it looks like in the picture. It really doesn't have any place to go. But that piece is done. This is the hub that the legs connect to and the head sockets into. This is complete. Section 1-2. Now let's set this aside so we don't lose it, which I'm probably going to lose it. Okay, next up, part three. Leg number one. Chicken walker leg number one. Here we go. A-20. Oh, these are little pieces. Okay, what do we got here? They look like little sway bars. And these are slightly rubberized. These are still there. Yeah, this is the, again, very weird having rubber, you know, pieces on your... I just broke it. Never mind. They're not rubber. That one's not rubber. My bad. Okay. Don't copy me. All right. A3 and A1. Three and a one. I should do this through like, what's that? What's that video channel needs more B wing? They haven't made a B wing kit yet uh, from Bandai, and they haven't done a tie bomber. If they do a tie bomber, I will be all over that because that is my favorite ship for some stupid reason. I don't even know why. Um. But, what was I saying, um, uh, what's that What's that video thing we, oh, Twitch. Should I do a Twitch video of me building model kits? All right, let's see what we got here. This side goes here. This piece goes this way. Okay, it hangs out like that. And this goes in the thing. Okay. There we go. Like a little... Digi leg. Right. And then A12. I like when it uses the same sprue over and over again. This one I have to dig for them. A12. And B16, B17. As I said that, of course, now we switch sprues. Where is sprue B? B16, 17. Okay. 16 and 17. Give these guys a little cleanup just to be nice. Well, they really don't need much. I mean, they come off these sprues pretty well, very well engineered. Now, okay, this guy here, and this little thing goes inside this. Okay, it's nice. You got a little socket that builds right in there. So there's really no guesswork. That's what I love about these kits is you, there's no guesswork. Everything, it either fits together or it doesn't. If it doesn't fit together, you're doing it wrong. Okay. And then this part attaches to the back of this. There's his little ankle Achilles tendon. And that'll hold on for a second. I may have to glue that one. I don't know if that's going to get another piece. It looks like D1. Where's my D? Ooh, that came off funny. Uh, D1, 13 and 12. D1, 12. D1, 13. Yeah, just 
just a little tiny cleanup just to make sure they meet up perfectly. Anyway, what's the difference between a, 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 oh, a Jew and a Boy Scout? Are we going to be uh, offensive on this thing now? Go ahead. Uh, and Roger, you don't need much glue on these. I only use glue on parts that are like, you know, kind of weak and loose and falling off because otherwise this thing works pretty well without glue. This is on the back. Okay, yep, it supports that piece. Oops, and I just dropped it. Get back on here. That goes there. That's well engineered. Yeah, these pieces all meet up and connect. To give you that little ankle, I wonder if they move. I don't know if I don't know if this is posable. That's the only thing I'm actually not sure about. And then this part, okay, so no glue needed. There you go. I was, I was wrong on that. Yeah, that's one joint, as they say, or jerned if you're from New York. D one seven and six. D one six. Okay. And who was it that said they were going to be building it with their kids? Spatman, build the Colonial Market knee helmet next. No, I did a video of some stuff that I do in the shop. I did a couple of how-to videos. I don't usually do lives. It's painful to watch people twist and snap parts of... No, oh, gotta, gotta, gotta cut. Always. Now I can't tell if this part is sprue or if it's just a weird looking part of the kit. I'm going to guess, I'm going to say sprue. I can't tell you how many times, my, my thumb, I'm surprised I even have a thumbprint anymore. Because I usually do, I pull the knife to my thumb while I'm cutting. Which is not bright, but it's all calloused anyway, so it doesn't cut in, it just kind of dents it. Oh, John Hudgens. All right, let's see what we got here. So this is like a little ankle piece. It goes in here. Does this... Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah, that part goes inside. Got it. That's why it wasn't fitting. This part goes on the outside. All right, and his little so his little foot has a little bit of play, so you can kind of place it. But I guess you can't like make him bendy, you know, put him into weird walky things. Or maybe you can. This is this is the shin leading to the foot. We still haven't done the thigh, the little chicken thigh. Okay, and that is one leg. Now we're going to the foot. Foot time. D one. And a lot of people don't know about this. Let's see if you guys do know some Star Wars trivia history. The foot of the ATST in Empire Strikes Back is actually, which is this piece right here, which I just pulled off. You know what that's made out of? Let's see, reading episode of Molding Something. Okay. Uh, this is the top of a TIE Fighter. The uh, Let's see if I have one here. Hold on. Ugh. So this is the, basically the bottom part, eh, now I dropped the piece on the floor, the bottom part of a TIE Fighter, they chopped it up and made that the top of the foot. Look at that, little trivia for you while you're watching. Uh -huh. Okay, like that, uh, D116, yeah, a lot of these were kit bashed, after the first movie, I mean, the, you know, the first movie it kit bashed. Uh, every kit they could find from, you know, tanks and motorcycles and uh, Saturn rocket model kits and the visible V8 engine. But for Empire and Jedi, a lot of times they looted their own model kits, like other Star Wars kits, mostly TIE Fighters, were chopped up to make the parts for other kits. All right, D1B20. Mm. Are you B or B? B20. Your little tiny fork piece. There we go. Uh -huh. 
Pacham, pacham. Okay, and I am going to need this part too. Yeah, sorry if I won't get to all your questions as quickly as I want, but see. When am I back in New York? Uh, June, what, July 1st and 2nd. Um, I posted a thing about it on the wall. I'll be there for Eternal Con. If you want to do something, that's great, but it's got to be kind of local to the Nassau Coliseum because that's the hotel I'll be in, and I won't have a car, and I'll be busy doing a convention, so I won't be traveling. All right. Okay, so this, and the little toe thing. Okay. Oh, so this goes in here. This little ball socket. Oh, okay, interesting. Okay, machine, following the instructions. And then this guy goes on top, like so. Nice, all right. So his little toe wiggles, too. You can make him point his toe at things. Yeah, we were thinking of, uh, some people were talking about doing a big dinner at Vincent's Clam Bar, because it's kind of like right around the, that area, and it's pretty awesome. Okay, now to attach this to the foot. To the foot! Okay, you go all the way in there. Is that in? No, let's see. There we go. When in doubt, push it. Okay. And the bottom of the foot. And there we go. That's one footy done. Now for his little chicken thigh. All right, we got some tiny pieces coming up. Let's see, let's do the big ones first. B4, B2, That's B4. B2. Yeah, if anybody really enjoys watching these, you can feel free to mail me a, yeah, Glencoe wrote, a uh, Bandai model kit, and I will build it live, because I do love building these kits. They just go together so beautifully. Uh, D15, this is a B, C, A, A9, okay. Especially if they ever come out with a TIE Bomber. I will build the hell out of a TIE Bomber. And I'll even do a B wing for Brian. A19. B. Wait, did I get B9? No, I did not. Missed one. B9. Where'd you go? Here you are. Alright. Yeah, I never got really into the B wing or the A wing. I don't know if I was like too old, like you know, by then, like the uh, the toys had kind of lost their luster for me. The Ewoks kind of ruined Jedi for me, and for a lot of people as well. Um, D one five. So I don't know the the last movie with ships that I really liked was Empire. Uh, all the new stuff for Jedi, I just really wasn't that into. Five and D11. Okay. Ooh, it is a tiny piece. Oh, I'm losing this one. Oh, this one's going flying. Oh, this is just a tiny, teeny, a tiny little, little donut. Oh. <laughs> they have three of them. I'm assuming you only need two, and there's one extra because they know you're going to lose it. Because I have to trim off a lot of excess sprue off of, I already lost it. Oh, there he is. Okay. It's so hard to see here. Okay, I'm going to say this guy. This guy's nice and clean. A little bit here. This guy. Here, okay. It's nice. I don't go crazy. You know, when I was younger, building kits, I would sit there and sand every seam line and 
get rid of every it's you, nobody can see this crap when you're done okay but this little guy nope, not yet. let's get this one looks good okay now let's see if we can clean this up without losing it okay that looks good fingers crossed we get this assembled I like the B-Wing because it's basically a large starfighter that can take out capital ships. Yeah. Well, as Rogue One showed, so can the Y-Wings in unison. That was pretty good. They did a pretty decent job. All right, so what do we got here? We got this guy. And this guy goes on the outside of this. Okay, interesting. And then this guy goes inside and becomes a little joint. Is that in there? Mm -hmm. There we go. Bandai kits. These things fit together like a freaking Swiss clock. They are so beautifully done. Uh, Bandai should be paying me to build these and complimenting them throughout. Alright. That goes in here. And then this little teeny thing, why would this be a separate piece? Why would you make me put that here? Dropped it, but found it, don't worry. Not the, where are my hemostats? Hemostat, stat. I'm gonna use the exacto knife. I might lose a finger on this. Ugh, okay. Why did that need to go there? It's this little tiny little dot that goes on the bottom for no good reason. I don't know if you guys can see. Like that little round piece right there that just stuck on there. You know, I should do that. I should actually make sure that it's just written backwards just for the heck of it. You know. Okay, and then there were other pieces here that I just lost, so we'll just forget them and pretend they don't exist. Or did I not pull those parts out? Let me see. D15 and B14. Five. Nope, I pulled it out. Five. There it is. There's five. Okay. Did I pull out B14? I did not. Okay, so I didn't lose everything. Ah! Yeah, sometimes if it's nice and cool in here, Belle will come in and sleep next to me while I work on model kits. I think because we have no air conditioning today, she's not going to. Now, the A-Wings, I think, were the suicide ship of Star Wars. That was the, uh, the proverbial, you know, engine with seats. Or suicide sled, I believe, as Han Solo called them in one of the books. Okay... Let's see which way you go. Okay, all right, just like that. And this guy goes in here as like a little weird joint. You know, it's kind of funny. The X-Wing model kit from Bandai is so well detailed that you can literally look at it and notice all the little tank parts that are putting it together. It's, it's very, very well done. Oh, my God, another D1. Where are you going to put another one of those things? Ugh. Oh so many those little guys no more d1s all right d1 let's be d oh there's two more d1s just on this one part oh my god they're killing me here bandai i guess i was wrong you do need all three of them i thought they threw in an extra one to cover up my stupidity but I was wrong. They're actually expecting me to be good at this. Okay, here we go. D12. Right, this piece is at least a little bit bigger. Okay. D12, D14. Okay, this has got attached D14 when displaying the model for a long period of time. I guess this is kind of an ankle lock. Um, am I putting in an ankle lock? Do we put the ankle lock in? I guess we need an ankle lock, right? 
throw it in there. I don't know. I mean, I, I plan on displaying it for a long period of time. I'm not really going to be playing with it. So. D14. And D13. Oh, okay. So you can either do one or four, or three or four, really. All right, let's do these other pieces first, and then we'll decide whether we're locking the ankle or not. Let's see if I can do this without losing this little piece. Why? Just little circles. ILM, what were you thinking? It's just this little tiny circle piece. Okay. Why would that go there? And then D1. Okay. Okay. And then the thigh bone connects to Nothing. It doesn't connect. This does not connect. Why do you not connect? Am I on the wrong part of the thigh bone? Oh, yeah. It goes this way. <laughs> That's right. They're bifurcated. They have the, the hooky thing. I was trying to hook the thigh up like a human thigh would go, not like the other thigh. My bad. Okay, so this does give you some movement. So we can we can display it in in ways. This piece would lock it into one position. I'm going to use the stand, so I'm probably going to, I might as well just lock it. I don't really see a need to kind of, I'm not going to walk it around the house or anything. Or am I? Okay, so. Yeah, that locks it. Gives you a little bit of play, but not much. Okay, that works for me. Okay, leg. And done. Okay, no, it doesn't quite stand up on its own. I'll put that over there with him, I think. All right, now what is this part? How does it go from three to five? I'm missing a step. Oh, there it is. Okay. This, oh, man, I forgot a bunch of steps. I, You know, Bandai does this weird thing with the instructions. So down here, let's see if I can get the light to it, at least in some way. Show us what we're doing here. You've got the instructions, and each of these is numbered. So this is step three. It goes through. And then the next step in the thing is five, if you notice. But because I forgot that they put little mini instructions on the top that are separate and have nothing to do with anything else. So there's a whole step for the middle body part that I missed because of their weird instructionals. D110. Crazy Japaneses. Okay. C. D1. Okay. I always forget to look up there. Just, you know, you, you try and be linear. You're thinking, oh, they're just going to flow in order, which is the way a normal set of instructions would, step by step, right through. But no, they trick you. That's how they get you. I don't know who this bad is, but he's terrible at this. Yeah, I'm, I suck. And you're the guys wasting your Friday night watching. Ha-ha! Oops, I trimmed too much off of that part. Don't tell anybody. Don't look at this part. I'm going to have to put a little bit of glue on this one hose. And last one here. Fenders. I suck at lighting in my shop, in my house, in my life. That horrible lighting. These little fender guys go on here. How is this anyway? How's the? I'm expecting you to be at work. Not gonna be lunch. What time do you think it is? It's ten o'clock. Um, is this camera angle good? Can you guys see everything that's going on here? 
I'm going to put a little tiny drop of glue on that hose. Anyone contact you after Megacon? No. Did I miss Megacon? Megacon was a couple of weeks ago, wasn't it? I'm going to put a little glue here. And then use... I thought I saw a toothpick. Toothpick. This is why I keep my desk messy so I can find things. Just a little drop of glue. I don't even know if this glue will hold because this is like a rubber hose. But okay. okay. The next convention I got contacted for is called Coslaceum, which is it's this month here in June. Actually, I should contact them back. I haven't confirmed it. Uh, it was just to do to be a panelist. Just to do um, uh, Q and A stuff with some of the guys from Face Off, so I thought it was like, okay. We might as well. Uh, what are we doing here? B or D one eleven? This one has a little bit of extra sprue. D one eleven. B ten. B. B nineteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the more I think about it, the more I kind of have to do the Chewbacca version, you know, just for Peter Mayhew. <clears throat> Just to play nice. Alright, A5, A11. Okay. A5. Means I get to paint a Wookiee. Woohoo! Wookiee painting! Um, oh, as far as that goes, for that that kind of mega con, I thought you meant like the convention con. I mean, not in particular. I mean, I get emails all the time for people asking pricing and whatnot about armor, but uh, they never really tell me where they heard, you know. And what do we got? Oh, I know, I know, Jim. Uh, reminds me that I have two Bandai Bear Guy kits. Is that some kind of gay sex thing? What's a bear guy? Looks good. This guy here. We'll clean up here. Okay, this guy. A little bit over here. This guy. Yeah, this looks good. Looks good. Okay. All right. Now let's see what we got to do. This thing. And this thing, and then. This guy goes this way. Okay, and then this guy goes this way, no, this way. Okay, and then this guy. There we go, okay. And then he gets the little cover. Okay, weird little. I don't know what this is. What they've got, but they move. It's a weird little pistony, ankly thing. Oh, it goes on the leg. Okay. So now we go. Now we're up on step four, which is on the top of the page that I probably would have never seen. This part goes in there. So this is, I guess, how they attach. Oh, I see. Okay. Interesting. That's how it attaches to the body. It's a little hip joint. Jurnt, as they say. And then we have B7, which is the armor plate that blocks, like, the knee-looking thing. Okay. 
time. Okay. Open that up a little bit. And how do you attach? Mm -hmm. Oh, you go down below to there. All right. Swing. We're like halfway done. This goes in here. Yeah, there we go. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Pew pew. All right. And now we get to make another leg. Yay. Step number five. And you'll note there is a number six on the top because that's how they do. And a seven and nine. Eight goes back down. I don't know how they decide which step is on the top and which one's on the bottom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, who's going to pay for me to fly to Japan so I can talk to these Bandai people about their instructions? Okay, here we go. All right, B. I'm going to be like those cosplay girls who just have everybody pay for everything for them. B, 12 and 13. I need to do that. Anyway, give me a little cleavage. There you go. A little boob shot, like while I'm working, to make you want to watch. Now I am officially a cosplayer. K B A A twelve A is the big one. I remember that now. A twelve is the little hip joint. Chewbacca. What a Wookie. All right, now let's see. This goes this way. This goes this way. This locks in place. Love how these kits just connect. Shklablam. No glue needed. As I let go and it all falls apart. Um, you like my uh, gay guy sex toy? No, it has guns, then it's not gay. I don't know. Can't gay people use guns? Are you that homophobic that you're not allowing gay people to have guns? Okay, uh, let's see. A. That was pretty funny. Uh, I do. My boobs are getting big now. I might need a bra soon. Okay. Boom. Boom. Well, this whole week I haven't even been able to, I have an elliptical that I was actually getting really good at doing almost an hour. I actually discovered the trick to being able to do like an hour on the elliptical and not even noticing. Like you're almost like asleep while doing it. And uh, I haven't been able to do it for the whole week because there's no air conditioning and I'm freaking dying in here. And I wasn't about to do an hour on the machine and then walk out into a, you know, 90 degree house. With Belle sitting there staring at me. She kind of enjoys it. Then she walks over, sits down next to me, and starts licking all the sweat off my head. That's how she gets her salt intake for the month. <laughs> okay, that. This little circle guy. He goes over here. Let's make sure I'm doing this in the right way. Nah. I'm doing this upside down. That guy, he goes the other way, this way, okay. Almost screwed that up, but did not. But then I looked at the instructions, shocking I know, and realized, oh, the trick, uh, video games, oddly enough. Uh, I discovered that by, you know, sitting there, like I used to watch, I used to try and watch TV, I'd watch, you know, an episode of whatever on Netflix, or I'd uh, you know try and read. I, I would I tried all these things, and like after ten minutes on the elliptical, I'm like, oh, I'm so bored. I want to get off this. 
So one day I couldn't get my Wi-Fi to work on to watch an episode on Netflix, and I had my phone in my hand, and I just started playing one of those like you know it wasn't Candy Crush, but it was one of those jewel popping games. Uh, where you got to match three colors of whatever, you know, that stupid thing. And the next thing I knew, it was, you know, 30 minutes later, and I didn't even notice that I had been exercising. Um, and so I started doing that, like, every time. And I realized that after a while of just, you know, playing some mindless, inane video game, I can do 45 minutes to an hour on the elliptical, and when it's over, dripping sweat, I'd be like, you know, I could have kept going. I didn't need to stop. I just stopped because of, because the timer went off, you know. So that was my, my thing. It was getting really good at it, and then... And then this heat. Okay, boom, boom. We got this guy. We need D2. Sorry, I get distracted and I forget things. 12 and 13. But yeah, somebody should invent that. And I've seen people try and integrate video games into exercise, but. It's always something that you gotta like kind of focus on and, and do, you know, you're, you're jogging and there are fake zombies chasing you. And that's cool, I'm sure that's fun as well. But um, it needs to be something that's so mindless that your brain just kind of leaves and isn't focusing on anything. And then your body is just doing its own thing. And I'm telling you, I can do an hour on the elliptical. You'll be exhausted, but you can do it and you don't get bored. Because once you start getting bored, then you start thinking, well, if I end now, I did 20 minutes or 10 minutes, and it's okay. It still counts as workout. You know, by, by doing it this way, um, with the mindless thing, you just kind of shut down and, and go. It's awesome. Okay. Next. Chicken thigh. But you have to be able to use your hands, so you can't really do it like on a... I guess you could do it on a bike, you just don't hold the steering wheel, just play. But then your, your, your one thumb gets kind of sore. So the next day, you're going to have an ache right here. That's going to be the problem area after your workout. Just so you know. Okay, next, D2. Six and seven. Mm. Yeah, I was actually very proud of myself today. I went into Hobby Town, USA, to look for some uh, paints as opposed to Hobby Town, USSR, or whatever. Um, and they didn't have what I was looking for, and they had an entire selection of Bandai kits, including the uh, they had the Slave One, they had Falcon, which is one of the next ones I wanted to get. They had, which I have one of the Falcons, which is awesome, but I want to do one. Uh, the Empire Strikes Back style. They had, I mean, literally every kit that I think exists from the Bandai Star Wars line. And I was very good and I did not buy one. I was very impressed with myself. Pachang! Alright. Yeah, the one that I have next, this is the next one I'll be doing. I might do it if you guys want, if you guys enjoy this. It's the, it's, it's pretty cool. It's a U-Wing. The TIE Striker and two of the little tanks, the ore tanks that uh, transport the Kyber Crystals in Rogue One. So if you guys want, and it comes with a little K2SO and all the other cool things I looked at it before. If you guys enjoy this and this becomes a thing, I'll, I'll do that one next. All right, five. Now we're on to the foot. For those of you who have an ATST foot fetish, here we go. Ka Chang. Foot, 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 and a little toe cover. Look at that, I don't even need to look at the instructions or the numbers anymore. I know which piece is which. Okay, now i got to look though. What's the little toe? B21. I forgot where the toe was. The toe is definitely, I don't know what this piece is in real life, but I, I'm assuming it's it's got to be a part of a tank of some sort. Anybody know? Anybody? Let's see how I can get what this thing was in, you know, whatever model kit they stole it from. Does anybody know what this was? It's, it's too unique to have been scratch-built. I think it's just a it's a kit bash, but I just don't know what kit. 
It's one of the ones I don't know. Wow, three and one. This kit was... I think it was like 25, 30 bucks. The Bandai kits are not expensive. The ATST was 32. I think I got it for 30 at Momocon, you know, from one of the vendors. Um, the Falcon, which is an amazing kit, is like 50, you know, 45, 50 most places. They're not expensive kits, and they are so beautifully engineered. Like, I'm shocked. Like, I would have gladly paid double what they charge for a kit of this quality. I shop at Hobbytown USSR, yeah. They, they, they'd let you shop, but you'd have to wait in line for seven days to get one little dab of paint. <laughs> okay, foot time. Footy foot. Footy, footy foot. Did I put this foot upside down? No, that's right side up. Okay. Chang, little foot cover. Uh, okay. Okay, came out nice. Now on the piece. There we go. The tolerances are just so perfect. Like everything. If you don't align it perfectly, it's not going to connect. You've really got to know exactly where everything goes. It's just perfectly done. And that's another foot and shin. Now for the thigh. D2. Oh, no, there's little one pieces. Oh, I'll do those after. I hate those things. Mm, any other Ds? D2, 5. I'll do the little one piece at the end. Let me put everything else together first because I'm going to lose that thing. Or throw it just out of spite. Okay, bam, bam, that was D. Next up is B. B, your thigh piece. Your thigh piece. Yay. Thigh, what else? 13, this is B, 15, B, 8, another thing that I usually do, especially if I'm building a kit over time that I'm going to be working on for a couple of weeks, I mean, the Bandai kits, generally you're done in one, one or two nights, they're really simple, B, 15, I like to, like, as I clear out a sprue, so that I'm not constantly hunting to see where the parts are. Like if an entire section is done, generally not where the letter is, but like this, oh, I will just chop it off. Like I'll just, hey, get over here. Trim this whole thing so it's gone so that I'm never, you know, kind of like, oh, is there a part there? Is there something I'm missing? I like literally just trim out all of these bits. Uh and then throw them out so that I know that that part is all finished. And then once the sprue's done, obviously you throw it out, but I try and clear them as I'm going, when I'm doing a long build, so that I'm not constantly like, oh, which part is here, which part goes where? All right, A, A, B, 15, I got, D, I got that guy, that guy, B, 5. Hold that guy off and I lost him. He flew away, there he is, okay, and A-10, that's the piece I'm missing, A-10, hanging out over here by Chewbacca, okay, <laughs> oh, Dion, what's up, Dion, you guys not playing... Star Trek Bridge Crew tonight. Still dying to do that. If anybody has PlayStation VR and is playing and hasn't picked up Bridge Crew, I highly recommend it. Even if you're not that big of a Star Trek fan, it's still just a great game. If you're a Star Trek fan, then it's a freaking amazing game. But uh, it definitely, I find playing single player on it that I spend a lot of time, you know, taking over the other controls. You're kind of in virtual reality playing on the bridge 
and you've got all the different consoles, and as the captain, you kind of delegate orders and tell people what to do and, you know, this kind of stuff. But the, the bridge crew, you know, the, uh, what do you call it? Um, the AI on the computer, they're just idiots, and they're just really bad at doing what they, you know, they go and do the thing, but they don't, like, put any thought into it. And I'm just like, no, don't go that way. Go around the mines, you idiot. So I find myself jumping in and having to take over and actually do everyone else's job for them. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm a control freak. I don't know if it's anybody else. You know, what's a Star Trek? Yeah, we need to do it. And I'm sure there's a fourth person that we can get to play whatever the fourth position is. And I don't know. Have you played uh, on online again with other people? Like, does it randomly assign... Who's going to be what position, or do you guys have to fight over who's going to be the captain? And when you're playing it with multiple people, like, what does the captain do? Because on, on the, the game, the captain tells everybody else what to do, but if you're playing it with a group of people, they're going to know what to do. Like, they're going to, I mean, what's stopping everybody else from just kind of playing and, you know, the captain says, hey, go left. You're like, yeah, fuck you, man, I'm going right. Like, does the captain have some other role that you don't know about? Like, or does that make any sense? Hey, and Grace is here. Not yet. Yeah, that's 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 my issue too. I don't want to play against a bunch of other people or with a bunch of other people uh, that I don't know because you know I always end up like in the old days of Call of Duty and whatever other games I used to play online. It was always me and Drew and like five nine-year-olds that all they wanted to do is curse out my mother and I just like I kind of turned me off to the online gaming thing and they were on our team like it wasn't even like they were yelling at us from the other side it was pretty bad so I'm, I'm curious to play with a group of friends which is always fun it's just always problematic getting people oh, I almost lost that one that one went flying that was the, the D1 piece that I hate hate this little thing. For those of you who are joining now, there's six of these parts. I'm going to lick my finger and stick it to my finger. Let's see if I can do this. This is the piece. Let's see if we can... It's this small. It's just a little round thing. And there's six of them. I hate them with a passion. They are very hard Get, uh, nope, nope. Get it back there. Nope. I saved it. I got it. I got it. Get back on there, you. You can do it. Yay. Okay. Oh, God. Why didn't they mold that in? Why would you need that? Okay. And then I need another D1. Uh, we're doing the D1s again. I hate these things. And I'm going to do the ankle lock again. Which is nice because that means I get spare parts. I've got a whole bin over here of just spare parts left over from other kits. In the hopes that one day I'll kit bash and have to build something. And I never do. I never do. But they're there. Maybe one day. Well, I will go digging through because I want to look for like... I am building... I have the... Uh, uh, the Terminator pieces and those guys I want to build like you know destroyed city so I might use little bits and parts from that okay pa -chow, pa -chow. this guy goes on the foot right on there on the foot I hate this guy little tiny D1 okay but gotta go play Ghost Recon I, I you know I finished the main missions the whole main Ghost Recon, and I was playing Narco Road, and it is horrible. I don't know if you have that DLC, but if you do, just don't even bother. It's like, it's all just racing monster trucks and jumping motorcycles on... It's like, it's completely not what Ghost Recon was. It's like a whole other game that they just kind of jammed in that same map. It's it's just bad. Okay, pip -cham. Thigh guy goes here. That can't be right. I'm doing it again. I went backwards. Okay, so he goes in. 
there. Nope. Mm -hmm. Yep, he does. Okay, I just gotta push it. Push it real good. Okay, there's the ankle. Ugh. Is that how that goes? There's two of them there? Oh, I'm missing one. One. Two. I think one of my D1s fell off. Or it didn't come with one. I don't know. Champ Jam. This guy goes in here to lock the knee. And the last D1. Or did I just not use the other one? Now I am confused. Yeah, I pulled it off. Okay. I mean, if I don't have this tiny little piece, then the whole kit may as well just go in the garbage. Just toss the whole thing. It's useless now. Without this tiny little stupid thing. Yeah, one of them must have popped off, I guess. Or did I not put it on? I don't remember. Yeah, you end up with two of them kind of back to back. -to. This one doesn't have one. Don't tell anybody that there's one missing here. I don't know where it went. I don't know if I forgot to put it on or if I got bored and tossed it in a screaming fit. I don't remember. I'm sure it will turn up on the end of Belle's nose at some point because she's very good at... Hey, I found it. Never mind. <laughs> I apparently never installed it. It's just sitting here. I must have not cut it and forgotten about it. Make fun of my messy workstation all you want, but I still find stuff. Yay! Now the kit looks good. D1 falling. Yeah, 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 yeah. We did all the D1 jokes. Okay, earlier. You guys missed them. All right, B11. Make a joke about B11. Let's see how good you guys are. Anyone can do a D joke. Do a B joke. B11. B19. Another one of these guys. Did all the scout walkers have the same weapon systems? Right? It's like a missile pod on one side and a gun on the other. Or were there different ones? Were there like a... Stop acting like you B-11. Okay. That was close. It's a good try. And I mean, how great can these things be if they were taken out by little freaking teddy bears on indoor? Okay. So, let's go to my other rule of getting rid of all the excess sprue. Yay, as it flies over and hits me. Because there is a lot of empty sprue here that I am looking through and not finding anything. So I will trim it off for now. Okay. A. A is over here. And we've decided, Grace, that we're going to go with Chewbacca. Because I know you're, we're missing. Was it a grenade launcher? Did they ever launch grenades and take out Ewoks? Because that would have been awesome. I would have watched that. You know, the whole freaking thing, they killed one Ewok in the entire war. I mean, that's pretty bad. And one more piece I'm looking for, D2. And Larry joined. You guys got nothing going on on a Friday night. You're worse than me. All right. Now I feel lame, like, looking back throughout my entire life, the idea of 
building model kits without people watching just feels so dirty. Like, I don't think I could do it now. I don't think I could ever build a kit without broadcasting it live. Okay, little hip bone, hip joint. Uh, what am I missing? This one connects differently. All right, we gotta go back up to the top for six. Did I do this wrong? This one doesn't have the same. Am I missing something? Some other socket? When all else fails, read the instructions. All right, so we're at five. Okay, and then it jumps up to here. I'm missing a part. I'm missing a thigh joint. There's got to be one more piece that goes on this because this does not work. I missed something. I blame all of you guys. All right, back to the thigh. Okay, that went there. That was on the outside. That was there. That was the flat part. It connected there. That went there. And that was right. That looks right. This one has a different part. Hmm. Weird. How does this connect? If this is different. Did I do this upside down? Is this piece inside out? It does not make sense. Okay, four, five, six. There's something missing here. There's something off. Let's see if we can figure out what. Is this piece inside out? Let's find out. Let's pull out the little joint. The other nice part about this being uh, not glued together means I can take it apart. In theory. Come on. I couldn't have done that inside out, could I have? Well, that part's right. How is that possible? Here's the problem that I have. Like this one, there's an open hole that the joint piece goes into, but on the other thigh, it's outward. It's an outy, not an inny. And I'm wondering if in some way, is it, did I put this together inside out? It's not possible. All right, let's see what we got here. Pam, okay, that's right. Oh, wait, no, nope, that's right. Yep, I did that right. Okay, that piece goes in there. That's correct. Okay, that goes there, that goes right, that's right. Okay, and then this comes in to lock the knee. Okay. Okay, that's correct. There's something off on this part. All right. 
I have no possible way of this connecting to the body unless there's a different connection take this all the way apart and see if I somehow did the thigh backwards in some way okay what do we got girlfriend looking into the toe thing sent you the specs on the toe don't see how it's possible that this thing could be inside out and still connect but you never know Bandai kits are wacky I think I see what I did wrong. I put this part in backwards. Okay, yep, my bad. I take back all the bad things I said about you guys. It wasn't your fault, that was me. But you guys should have been watching and spotted that. You really, really should have been on the ball for that one. This one socket was in upside down. I'm gonna need you guys to pay a little better attention in the future. goes in there. This, did I do this one upside down or right side up? That's, nope, that should go the other way. Like that. And then you connect here. Okay. Knee lock. Okay, and I guess this goes backwards E and backwards E and knee armor. Let's see if we can find it without using the Nikai. Yep, there we go. Knee armor. That kills off pretty much the rest of this sprue, except for one little gun and the little face of the of the tank. All right, there we go. Now we're back on track. How long have we been broadcasting? What are we up to now? How long time is it? Hey, watch. Make noises. Do something. Mm, come on. Ten thirty. It's been like an hour? It's been like an hour and a half. Yeah, everybody wants Belle. She, every so often you'll see her, if you watch in the back, she'll walk by and take a look in to see what we're doing. I think today it's just too hot, so she's staying inside with the big fan. Yay! And that is leg number two. All right, fine, let me go, Belle. Belle, come here, Belle. Everybody wants to say hi to Belle, so I'll go get Belle. Uh, nobody cares about Spat. I'm going to go wake her up from her nap. She is very confused. She was asleep, and you people made her come in here. All right, everybody happy now? And the share comes up because I have the camera reversed, and for some reason, it doesn't reverse the reversal. It doesn't know to do that. Are you guys happy now? You got Bell here. Yay! Bell, you okay? You mad at me for waking you up? You cool? She's like, what's going on? Why am I in here? What is wrong with you people? You want to wave a low bell? 
she is so out. She is so tired. She's <laughs> like, what are you people doing? Okay. Yeah. Oh. There you go. She's, you're going to watch her stumbling out. And she's like, oh. He's done with us. All right, that's all the bell for tonight. She doesn't want to play. Okay, we got that. We need this little guy. There's apparently a big joint piece. All right, you guys got your bell fix. You happy now? Can she still? Oh, yeah, she can still fit. I guess it depends on the TK bucket. As long as it's not one of those Riddell ones, I don't think she'll fit in that anymore. And the new, uh, the new Black Series helmets are a little small, so. Okay, and then this connects in here. Going, a weird little sex toy. Okay, and then the legs will connect. I'll, I'm going to stick them on there just temporarily, just to get a look. But I'm going to pull them apart for painting. I do want to give this like a quick gray coat before we go, but we're getting there. We got it. All that's left is the head. And I guess that head will balance it all out because this is not standing up. Ba chow, ba chow. Yeah, ready? Ah, the Ewoks got it. Okay. Now for the face. Let's go. We're on step number eight for those keeping track in your workbooks. Okay. Build in the cockpit. Ooh, I said cock. All right. Oh, wait. I'm probably going to want to paint this up a little bit. Do a little weird detailing. What color was the cockpit details inside the walker? i got to figure that out. I'll do a quickie. I won't go crazy because the top's going to be closed. And yeah, I'm not going to bother. You know what? I'm not going to bother. The top's going to be closed. I'm not going to do the little guys. Uh, what do we got here? This is the left and the right. I need a little seat section. Which is C one seventeen C one right because if we're doing the Chewbacca version, um, it was either going to be gray or I was going to do like a tan, like for the padding. Like, there's a lot of, like, uh, let's see, like, I hate the lighting. I never know what, how much, or how little. There's, like, the little quilted wall paddings. I don't even like doing those in, like, a soft green or, like, a gray or a tan. But but we're doing the Chewbacca version, which has the, the blast shields closed. Did I just hear Belle walk by? Can you guys see her? Sometimes she just wanders around the house. Like, she owns the place. Ooh, that one's flying. Um, there's the box. The Chewbacca version has the blast shields closed right now. They're open, I guess. Anybody remember? Fire up your copy of of Jedi and see, like when when Chewie brings the ATST up to the to the command thing. And Han Solo thinks he's dead. Was the uh, were the blast shields in front of the on the front of the ATSC open or closed? That is the question. Who's googling? Who is the Google master of this group? To check that. Where's Peter Mayhew when you need it? I'm sure he knows. He knows everything. Okay. That I need the back wall, which is C19, C19. A lot of nice detail in there. I mean, I'll go nuts hyper detailing every little panel and rivet and light and everything like that. Right? I think I remember them being closed, right? Nope. Someone's saying open. Brian says open. I got two closed 
Yeah, you missed Belle. She'll be back. I'll bring her back. Hold on. I thought you were there. Uh, Belle! I heard her walk by. I heard her little nails a minute ago. And even if they're open, I don't think you're going to be able to see anything through that little tiny opening. So I'm going to leave it. I am not going to detail the interior. If I feel the need at some point in the future, I can do another one. And I'll paint up the interior. But for now, I hear her. I can hear her back there. I think she's stalking me. Okay. Man, can you imagine? Look at all how tight that is. Did you guys see her? Yep. Somebody's this. Did she go by? <laughs> Bell. <whistles> Come here. I don't think she. Okay, that C227. And the Chewy Walker is the one that has the little blast across the face, right? Make sure I'm on the same page. Oops. Belle, I hear you. Come here. Come here, Belle. Come here. Good girl. Come here. Come here. Come here. I don't have any treats, but I'm not... Come here. No, come. Get it. Ay, 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 ay. Bell, stay. Bell. Bell. I gotcha. <laughs> like, what are you going to do to me? I'm going to run away. There you go. Did Grace run away again? Is she still there? Yes, that's me. You want to get some sweat off my face? It's hot in here. Grace still there or she left? Grace misses her again. She's going to be very upset. <laughs> okay. All right, Bill. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bug you again. Here you go. Okay. Stay there. There's a little bed here next to my my station that she usually hangs out in. Okay. A8. But like I say, with the no air conditioning this week, I think it might be a little too hot for her over here. She's checking out the plastic bags right now. <laughs> you missed it. Like, when we were doing MomoCon, we came home every night to this, like, gaggle of cats hanging out in the backyard. It was very weird. Okay. This attaches in here. Like so. And this connects here in the bottom. Okay. Coming together. Okay, next. The face. I can hear her little nails on the carpet, which means that she needs to get her nails cut very soon, which is not fun. Okay. Okay. That's nice. All right. And then the control panel. Wow. Yeah, one of these days I will do another one of these just so I can paint all the little controls on there for no good reason because it will never be seen. It's the one thing I really, I love and hate about building model kits. You, you go through, 
you know, hours and hours and hours of like super detailing all these little, and no one can ever see it. Okay, you. But man, they did a really great job with this. I mean, it's just fantastic. All the little details, every little control, everything. Frickin' Bandai. Okay, here we go. Got the seats, face. one tight little compartment I try and make something that sexual okay let's see C110 back wall Oh, that's why. I had it upside down. All right. That's nice. C1. Okay. These little side panels. should try and see about making that with a 3D printer. You could, but you know, I find that the scale models, you don't get, you don't get these kinds of details on a, on a 3D print. Not without a hell of a lot of cleanup or a much better 3D printer than I have. You know, my printer does some good stuff, but it really needs to be, you know, decent sized pieces, helmets and things like that, or decent sized props. It's definitely good at what it's good at, but for this, I'd rather pay the 30 bucks and, and buy it. Here, Belle. They were asking about you, Belle. And she came back. Can I get a fist bump, Belle? Can I get a high five? Yeah? You want to come over here? Come here. No. <laughs> She's like, I don't want to go back up there. I don't want those people looking at me. I left you some plastic bags, Belle. Do you want to put a plastic bag on your head? Okay. Nine continues over here at the beginning. Okay. Okay, so now we go to the top part thing. Yeah, so the top hatch will be open, but Chewbacca's big butt will be sitting in it, so I don't think you're going to be able to see anything through the hatch, so I think I'm okay with not painting it. And the fact is, you know, this is the opening through the top. So even with all this cool detail, once this goes on, and can I cover you? Is there other stuff over here? Once it goes on, basically, that's it. You, you really can't see anything inside anymore. This seam is not as perfect as it normally is on a Bandai kit. I'm wondering if there's something that I'm doing wrong or if there's another piece that covers it. That's it. Okay. That part. All right. All right. Why are these pieces red? Uh, I hate when the instructions do that. They put little, little notes, and the numbers are in red. I don't know why they're in red. Oh, assemble in numerical order. That's what that means. Okay. I found that. All right. So what do we have? C two, twenty two. So that goes first. Apparently, this will make a difference in the grand scheme of everything. 
if you do this in the wrong order. C2. Okay, kind of sits here for now. And then C18 connects over the top of it. Screws are in my way. This goes inside this. Oh, that's the back. Ah, I see it now. Okay. It's the back vent. Now I get it. I kind of moved over. All right, Eric. Good seeing you. Have a good night. So this goes over these. It's kind of weird. There's like this cool detail up here. And this thing just completely and utterly covers it. It's so weird how they do that. Okay. I don't know why that would be under there. Why would they make that detail if you're not going to show it? All right. C13. I can hear Belle back there. There she is. She's like sneaking by. She's like, he won't notice me. Except that her nails are too loud, Belle. Belle, you want me to cut your nails? Okay. There's the little commander's hatch. In there, little door. Now we need the little handlebar thing. Which is in rubber. I wonder if anybody will go back later and watch this video in its entirety live. Why have such a detailed cockpit and tiny hatch? Well, I mean, the tiny hatch is genetics, I'm sure, and the cockpit... I mean, yeah, even if you left all the doors and windows open, you're never going to see what's inside that thing. I mean, I could have done like a dark gray, maybe a little wash or something. But even with the, the windows... And the hat, you, you can't see in there. But yeah, if it wasn't for this video, I would have spent hours painting that. You know. Because I am that kind of idiot. Okay. And there's the little grippy handle bit. Which I'm sure is off a tank of some sort. Okay, armor plates. I keep hearing her. Are you guys seeing her walk by? Is she like going back there? I keep hearing it. I don't know if it's just a weird echo or if it's really her just kind of do -do -do -do, sauntering by to see what I'm up to. Oh, she's right here. <laughs> she actually snuck up next to me. Okay, no, I'm sorry. God, thank God it wasn't a rat or something, you know? I am apparently not very observant, Bill. Do you want to sit on my lap? Come here. I'll scooch over so you guys can watch. Sometimes she likes to see what I'm doing. Oh, all the weird things that I do here. Okay, let's see. These are little gun pieces. I need these guys. C2. Do you want some of that, Bill? You want to bite that? So I guess if I really want to get a lot of views, I don't need cleavage. I need Bell in my lap. I think that's going to be my gimmick. So I can make a million dollars on YouTube. 
Guy does geek things with tiny dog on lap. That's going to be my hashtag. Pew, pew, pew. Let's see, how does this go? This guy goes here. Okay, and then this one goes on this side. Little armor plates. <laughs> uh, next up, we're doing the gun pods. Okay, D2. That's not D2, Bell. Can you spell? D2. And we're getting up to the point of putting the guns on, and I am truly wondering if it's going to give different options for guns, if they're all the same. With the little grenade launcher, missile pod thing. Wasn't there one with a missile pod? Like, a, like it looked like, a, you know, sidewinders or something? Or am I just dreaming? It's not food, Bell. No, it's not food. Do you see what she's doing? She's grabbing my hand and trying to pull it. So that she can try and eat what whatever is in my hand here. Okay, so this. Oh, I see what they're saying. Okay, so this goes up like this. Belt, can you lick my hand? I can't do fine motor manipulation. And she's like, I don't care. Uh, D2. 14. Mm -hmm. I'm actually surprised she's willing to hang out in here because it is it is pretty hot. It's hotter in here than it is in the living room, so. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then this goes this way. Gun pod mount. And the opposite side gets D1. Uh, there's nothing left on this sprue. Let's cut all this off so we don't get confused. The other trick is to make sure that there is nothing actually on the sprue before you throw it away because I can't tell you how many times I've done that and then had to go dig through the garbage and like, ah, oh, there's a part I missed. I think this entire thing is all gone. The guy we're not using, and that's the short kneecap if you wanted it to be able to move. So that's all going into the spare bin. Now let me chop it up make it smaller. So it's just a dude. And the little kneecap thing. And the rest of it goes in the garbage. Make sure I'm not missing anything else. That screw is dead. What do we got here? C1. Still got some meat left on it. Not a lot. Some parts. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. There's the other one of these. And there's one little flat part on it that goes facing up, which is the hard part to find. Okay, press it in, and then the other gun mount. I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this tonight because I do want to give it a coat of paint, and I've already been here for a couple of hours, so I might cut it and then continue tomorrow by painting. I'm going to do a little bit more detailing. But I'll get all the assembly done tonight. She knows when she's near the Oya. Okay. Well, I think she's annoyed that my lap is not as comfortable as she feels it should be. Okay. Gun pod. Next up, some wires on the un underside. We have some wires left. A twenty-four. This side. Twenty-four and thirty-one. These are little tiny rubber wires. 
because I honestly really would like to do some really nice detailing on this kit and that will take a little bit of time so maybe I will just do the assembly get all the sub assemblies done and then we'll come back in for paint tomorrow come on rubber Bill. Mm hmm. Okay. This one. What? No, it's not playtime. You can't eat this, Bill. Okay, so this goes here and here. A little wire, a little thing. And this one goes this way. For some reason it's distinct. Second little wire. Very interesting. Yes, Bell, I know. Okay, either C11 or C12. So the two different hatches, depending on if we want Chewbacca standing or the hatch closed, we're going to go. Hatch open with Chewy. I'll prep it though. I don't know if I'm gonna no. attach it and just take a look. Yeah, there you go. Open hatch action. And then either C118 or C119 for whether the hatches are open or closed. I'm gonna guess this one is, I'm guessing this is the closed one. It's hard to tell. Mm-hmm. Usually I just sit here and talk to Bell while I build model kits. It's nice having you guys here. She wants scratch. Yeah, she wants scratches, and also she thinks this is food. She's like trying to figure out if this is something that she can eat. I'm trying to cut these pieces so I don't get bits of plastic on her. Not that she cares. She'll try and eat it anyway. Closed hatch and closed hatch. There we go. Ah, it's closed. I can't see. Okay. Blah blah blah. Number ten. The gun pods. Yay, bell guns. Okay, that was hooked on Chewbacca for some reason. C two. This is not C two. This is C one. Yes, I know. Okay, Bell, I have to. Oh, is this the commander's? Oh, that's what that is. So this is the spare commander's hatch. So that and the other hatches and just go straight into the spares. I can probably use this for my Terminator scene. That kind of fits the motif. But we'll see, so those guys. So, Sprue C1 is the right. Now, here we go. Where were D120, helps if you can see the numbers, uh, D120, D120, D131, okay Bill, 
31. Ooh, this is a little tiny gun. I'm trying not to bend the tip, as they say in guns. They're open, you sure? Everybody else is saying closed, and I'm remembering it closed. Yeah, and sending me pictures doesn't help. My phone's over there. I can't really look at photos that you're sending me. Did anybody else confirm it? So I've got 10 people saying, oh, uh, closed, and only one saying open. Okay, so. Uh, ba -da -ba -da, that was D C2. Did I throw that one out? Did I finish C2? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then this. Thank you. What are you doing, Bill? You want to go down? You okay? What? Okay. B. This is the last piece on this sprue. So that's how we know we're running it down. All right. Okay. C two thirty two, C two thirty one. There's D, A. There we go. C two. These are the last two on this sprue. Bell, let go of my. She just grabbed my watch, literally, and pulled my hand in. She got a nail right under the wristband of my watch, just so she could pull my my hand in. Do you want to go down, Bell? Come on. Here you go. Ready? Oh. Say good night to everybody. Say bye, Bell. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. And if you guys are in Atlanta tomorrow, she'll be at Diesel Filling Station for the Star Wars meetup. Yeah, I'm not paying attention. She gets like that. She's like, uh, if you're not gonna play with me, I'm gonna go walk away. Okay, so one. Let's see. Now, this is another one that has to be done in a certain specific order. So, first, this goes in here, the little gun into the little pod. Second, this gun. Third, this piece closes it in. Okay, there you go. Okay, and then D126 is like the little housing turret piece. I think I trimmed those too close. Eh, hey, doesn't matter. Now, this goes this way. Okay. And there's the turret piece for the bottom, I guess. That goes under here. Oh, nice. So, yeah. And it can rotate and go up and down. Alright. It can traverse, as they say, in the parlance. Okay, so now this is ready to get mounted. That's pretty much done. We just need the other, the side gun pods. Alright, let's figure this out. This one also has to go in order of assembly A21. Which is a little tiny piece, which I can probably lose. 
pretty easily. Okay, save that guy so we don't lose it. A21, okay, that's like the bolt that goes through everything. Let's see what that is. D, what do we got here? 22 and 29, here's 29. And 22, which is over here. Once again, you would think with all these weapons on this one walker that they would have killed more than one freaking Ewok. Just highly offended by that. The incompetence of the Empire. What's up, Bell? You came back? You want to come up here again? I think she's going, isn't it snack time? Iken has cheeseburger, or is that just cats? Dogs don't like cheeseburgers. How big would you say that cannon is? The one that I just built, this front one? If this is a dude, uh, you can see this guy here, this little guy. This gun is basically from his waist to his head. It's that big. Which is pretty big. Okay, so first off, I'm going to do this in order again, or else one... And this guy attaches to the side. And this guy attaches here. This one I might put a little glue on. Belle, are you coming back? Nope. I think she gave up on me. Let's see how well that connects. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then this pin. Okay, goes in thusly. This is a very odd connection point. I don't like the fact that they did this with a piece that's made out of rubber. Alright. You guys can see Bell keeps going back and forth. Background music. You want me to sing to you? Okay. Alright, it says we can choose either D1, 23. D1, 23, or A, 22. Well, I got a choice of what armor plate goes on the outside. I honestly don't know what the difference is. I'm going to go with this one just because I don't know. Okay, this goes here. A little blast shield. Okay. Lordy or Lord? Two hours now. Oh, God. All right. We're almost done. All right. This thing goes on here. It's hard to believe how quickly time goes by when you're just building a model kit. Belle, I hear you. I think she's getting annoyed. No one's paying attention to me. Okay, and then D124 is like a weird little 
bolt that attaches to the side. attaches into here. There's the gun pod. Very nice, very nice. And next up is the grenade launcher. And then we're done. That's the last of the parts. Okay, so I assume it's these. 28. We have one extra hose. Did I miss a hose somewhere? I did. A23. It goes underneath. Diagonal. Okay, hold on. Let me go back to this here. Just finish this part so I know we're done. And then I'll have to build the Wookiee. I just kind of assumed the last hose kind of went to the guns, but I just missed because these all these little belly hoses kind of look alike, so I kind of just assumed. Was. All right, here we go. Uh, last pieces. 28, 25. All right, it's kind of a grenade launcher, but it kind of looks like a Sidewinder missile pod as well. It could go either way. Boom, 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 and 30 is the little connector piece. And this guy is a spare. And this thing here is a spare. This entire sprue is done. All right, now, last gun. Uh, don't drop it, okay? All right, let's figure this out. So this guy goes in the front. This little guy goes in the middle. This is the connector. This guy is the back. Okay, and then this one. It goes in there. And then this goes in there. All right. And there's the little grenade launcher missile pod. That's right, I assumed his gender. Uh, you should get a second and do a kit bash with some jet parts now. Well, I'm assuming these are all probably tank parts and other weird things. Okay, so that's that. What else do we have? We've got the base, which we'll definitely be using. But I, it shouldn't be brown. I'm going to have to green it up. And I've also got a ton of the leftover moss from Groot. So I'll cover the base with that. We'll do that at some point. That'll be tomorrow or a future project. Let's get Chewy out and assembled. I will not be using the little laser bolts, which are very cool, but don't work with what I'm doing here. Those will go into the spare bin. This extra little hatch. That's rubber. Why is it rubber? That's weird. That'll go in the extra spares bin. This is nothing, nothing. There's a little connector piece. Which I'll probably never use, but it's here. And empty, empty, empty. That's the last of the sprues. Let's just clean up Chewy really quick. Don't tell Peter I'm taking an X-Acto knife to him. He might not appreciate that. Okay. And there we go. 
a little Chewbacca. What a Wookiee. He fits right in here. Chow. And then this guy goes in here. Again, I'm not going to put it all together yet until I paint. But that's it so far. That's pretty awesome. That's a decent scale. It's a nice little piece. And that's going to be enough for tonight. And it's got a little peg hole, so it goes on the little base. Chum. I will finish up. We'll do come back tomorrow probably, and I'll do the painting. I'll do a quick coat, do the grass, paint Chewy. I'll grab some browns and some greens, and I got to do a little white and silver for his little bandolier. And what color are Chewbacca's eyes? I'm sure you guys know. <laughs> Chia Chewy. All right, and that's what we'll finish up tomorrow. So good night, everybody. Thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. This is an awesome little kit. This was the Bandai ATST in 148 scale Star Wars Return of the Jedi. We will come back tomorrow and finish the painting and detailing and finish the kit. So I'll make sure Bell comes in for a cameo as well. Thank you guys. I will talk. And Neil joins just as we're saying good night. Good night, everybody. We will talk to you guys later. Uh, have a good night. And enjoy the rest of your Saturday punch. I'm gonna have to light up, fire up Lightwave, and make an ATST now. You can. It's it's not a hard thing. I mean, there's a lot of little detail that honestly, my 3D printer would never be able to get. But I mean, some other people probably could. Good night, everybody. I will talk to you guys soon. Later's.